All right, guys, how you doing? Ron Raymond here from the Raymond Report with uh, my special guest and co-host, as always, uh, Mr. Ross Benjamin. How you doing, Ross? It's all good. It's pretty hot here, Ron. It's going up to 95 here in western New York today. Yeah, so. it's uh, uh, what is it? Norm Peterson used to say, hey, Mr. Peterson, uh, when you come in the bar, it's um, – it's a doggy dog world. I'm wearing milk bone underwears out there or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, good, you know, Cheers was one of my favorite shows uh, growing up. Uh, How about up north of the border there? You're, you're getting some warm weather as well, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, 34. So I guess, uh, like you said, close to 85, 90 Fahrenheit. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's ice cream time. And, uh, yeah. And we're two weeks away from, uh, or a week away from, uh, the NHL training camps open actually a few days. When is it? July 10th tomorrow. So um, yeah. I believe. Uh, yeah, so cool. it's, it's sort of a weird feeling, Ron, you know, the NHL season is just about to start right now. And it's, we're talking about temperatures in Canada and Western New York in the eighties and nineties. It just doesn't correlate in your mind. Yeah. It just reminds me of that Seinfeld episode, bizarro world, right? Everything is just <laughs> so weird right now. But um, yeah, you're right. It is weird. But you know, like we we you know slowly getting there. You know, golf yeah. is uh, giving us uh, some good action. Um, you know, if you like NASCAR, some people like the the, the left turn circuit. Um, and then you got MLS starting, and pretty soon, Ross, we're gonna have um, Major League Baseball going, NBA, and then right uh, NHL hockey. Just uh, it's, I'm looking uh, forward to the NHL, right? You know, it's it's a playoff format. Yeah, it's expanded to 24 teams, but. You know, it should be exciting, you know, and it, it could go as long as October 1st, and uh, then they're going to start right back up in December. So, you know. It, 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 what's uh, funny about it is that before the um, pandemic, well, during the pandemic, they were talking about the NBA season and how they'd like to start closer to when football season's ending, right? Um, push that start date to, I think they said like Christmas. Um, I know they talked about that, but I wonder if anything like that will happen after, uh, you know, hopefully this all blows over and we get back to normal. I wonder if some of these leagues will, get, you know, start changing. Yeah, like day almost day. like a dumb luck theory where, hey, yeah. this is pretty good. Hey, let's start it on Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So today, Ross, on the show, um, we're going to keep with our format. We're going to talk a bit about uh, Sports Handicapping 101. And today, uh, going back in time, we're going to talk about our first ever sports book that we, uh, we encountered. Um, then today we're going to preview the um, NFC North, Chicago, Detroit, Green Bay, and Minnesota, along with the season uh, totals. And Ross, I thought today, um, you know, the first three shows went really well. We talked a lot about, uh, you know, the teams. And, and, and I think today we're going to be talking more about how to incorporate the sports betting angle into our, uh, our handicapping, into the show, and give more of uh, money management and, and more uh, situational handicapping tips on how people uh, to handicap if they're new or uh, also, um, you know, just betting, uh, the, uh, handicapping the NFL season and looking for uh, certain weeks to look, things to look for in handicapping. Yeah, I mean, there's a big, I, I hear a lot of shows out there and I think we were guilty of it, the first two shows, because I think we're cognizant of making sure the audience knows we're well-rounded we we not only bet on sports uh we're not only sports betting handicappers but we know what's going on above and beyond that but i think the gist of the show is to educate uh especially with a lot of novice sports bettors out there now with the u.s legalizing in a lot of states canada as a matter of fact um now you could bet single games correct is is that something that's coming up in canada yeah, it's starting to. I know it's uh, going through um, legislation right now. Uh, and, you know, they're talking about it in the house, but the house right now is uh, not in session. But uh, it, it's something that they're pushing. Uh, yeah, they want to go more toward get away from provincial lotteries and bring single betting at, at places like Woodbine Racetrack in Toronto, where you know they'll have a casino and then a sports book, just like in Vegas and, and Atlantic City, and basically almost everywhere now in the states. Yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah. You go to a but, <laughs> but I guess my point would be um, along the lines of what we're just talking about, not to get off subject, um, that it's about beating a number. We talked about this uh, uh, in the first show. Look, we don't care who's on both sides of the ball. Yeah, we know who's on both sides of the ball because, look, if there's injuries 
it's accounted for in a line. If we know about it, the bookmakers do. Weather conditions, it's accounted for in the total. You know, so to think that you're going to be one step ahead of a, an odds maker that does this on a daily basis and runs uh, thousands of simulations to get an accurate line uh, is, is ludicrous to think that way. And anybody who tries to tell you that numbers mean nothing, well, then you don't know anything about sports betting and you should listen to us. And I don't mean to be disrespectful in that manner. I'll just go back to what I said several times over the last week or so on, on this show is that numbers don't lie and liars don't figure. You think about that for a second, it applies to sports betting. No, and you're right. And the thing is, Ross, when, you know, when we got involved in the uh, sports handicapping business, um, in, there was no internet. There was internet. It was just starting like in 96. I remember, um, you know, the internet, I uh, remember like AOL and in, in Canada was iStar and, you know, you're uh, your modem hook up there. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah. <laughs> boy, oh boy. But, yeah. But, but the, the, the information back then, um, you, you had to go read a newspaper on online to see what's going on in green Bay, what's going on in Seattle. And, and that information throughout the um, period of time is just, there's so many sites now and there's so much information that it, it has changed the, the whole platform, the whole game uh, of sports betting. And it's no longer um, the information is quicker now. So the, the, the line adjustments are, are instantly now. They're, you know, before you're lucky enough, back say 10, 15 years ago, it would take the, the bookmakers like two days just to confirm the information was right. Yeah. And, and they would make that line. And then you see a big swing. It's like, oh, geez, jump three points. So we got to get on this. Uh, you know, we're on the right thing. Uh, but no, you're right. Uh, and to the people listening today, um, you know, give us a shot here. Like listen to a few podcasts. And then the, the thing we just want to make you do and realize is just maybe – think about the way you approach the way you handicap and incorporate some of our um, logic and theories into your way of handicapping. Um, you know, I always say, Ross, it's, it's, it's a lot like, um, you know, always using my coaching angle. I didn't invent inside zone. I didn't invite outside, outside zone when it comes to coaching football, but the way people put their own twist on it, yeah, that's what you want to do in sports betting. We all have our preconceived, uh, notion on on something that we see that we have an idea our gut feeling tells us this it's just you got to research the other say 10 percent to make sure you're on the right track and sometimes you're going to talk yourself right out of a pick man i can, there's so many times where I'm, I'm i'm handicapping the game like i remember doing my podcast and i'm, I'm like 20 minutes into it and i still didn't even know what i was going to take because i just i could make an argument for both sides and I finally yeah. I said, hey, usually no, when I'm, that happens it's a good good uh, idea to stay away right exactly I mean, you know it, when when you're, you're getting arguments on both sides you know ron you brought up a good point in the last podcast and 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 listeners have to understand this there's a distinct difference between a team trend and a betting angle uh, a, a betting angle is all teams in a specific situation and the results thereof okay where uh, a betting trend is for a specific team. Now, betting trends, as you remember, Ron, back in the day, they held a lot more water because the teams, the core group of, uh, of members on a team would stay together for seven, eight years. That's not the case anymore in the day and age of free agency, college football, where guys are jumping after their sophomore year or junior year. Uh, they're not there for the entirety of the four years. Now, having said that, um, again, I'm going to bring this up today. Uh, when it comes to a specific team we're going to discuss today, is, is head coaching trends mean a lot to me. Because, for example, if, if you took over Ottawa University in, in 2016 and they're 16 and 4 as an underdog uh, under your tutelage, there's a good chance you're motivating them kids very well when they're not expected to win. You know what I mean? I, I look at stuff like that. So I just wanted to bring that up. We'll touch upon it as, as the show goes on. But I, I just thought, because you brought it up the last time, and go, wow, you know, we we take for granted we know what a betting angle is compared to a trend. Novice betters may not. Yeah, and you know what? You make a great point. And I'll, and I'll, bring, up one, <laughs> I'll bring up one example. When I, when I was doing my NBA podcast and giving out the Ram Report NBA uh, picks of the day, I would say uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers, I would give a trend. But the trend involved when LeBron was there, you know, and it's yeah. like the, the, the trend was amazing. It's like, well, no kidding. LeBron James was there. But since he left, 
um, you know, and I, and I still, if I, you know, go off that number and people was like, wow, that's a big number, but you know, you, you got to realize that this trend has to do with that specific situation with that uh, uh, player. But here's another thing though, Ross, the mindset of the bookmakers that day posting that number, that doesn't change. So yeah. again, we talked about this earlier, perception versus reality has no timeline. Um, the perception versus reality back in, say, to, um, when LeBron was at uh, in Cleveland, I don't know what year is that, maybe 2016 or 2012, um, you know, back then, the perception of the bookmaker, when he woke up that morning, you know, he, he didn't wake up and, and took a, a dummy pill and said, okay, I'm going to put out a stupid line today, <laughs> you yeah, know? No, like they, no. they, they, they knew that um, how the, the, that day, what the, uh, the perception was and what the reality was, and then they, uh, they went and posted their line, right? Yeah. All right. Hey, we can, we can go an hour on that. Right. Yeah. Um, that's a great, you know, but this is what, this is the meat and potato of the show that we want to talk about though, Ross is that type of thinking and get people thinking, get people um, doubting themselves in their situation. Right. If, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're betting on sports and you're not making money, you know, what's the definition of a, a stu- like a, of insanity, keep yeah. doing the same thing over and over again. Right. Uh, and uh, and the worst fault you could have is just basing your picks on a short memory. You know, yeah. um, so, it, go ahead. Yeah. So just have an open mind to the public, yeah. uh, have an open mind when you're, when you listen to our, our podcast and hopefully we could uh, make you think about something and maybe change the way you approach your handicapping. And uh, again, like I always say, when I, we, we start, you, you need, just think of a hundred dominoes standing up. You need that first domino to, to go down. That's your indicator uh, that you might be on the right track and then everything falls into place. Right. All right. So, um, folks, if you're new to the Rain Report, you can find us on uh, YouTube off the OSGA um, keyword in the search or um, Rain Report, ATS Stats Rain Report. And, or you can uh, download us uh, where you get your uh, favorite podcasts, either iTunes, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, anywhere you download your favorite podcasts. All right, Ross, the Rain Report, as we know, is based on three key fundamentals value, percentage play, and the performance cycle. And uh, I like to get that uh, out there some, uh, every day. So that way, if new, uh, new um, listeners are listening, that's the philosophy of, in a nutshell of the uh, RAIN report. And um, I know if people want to get in touch with you, Ross, how would they do that? Uh, you could go to my website. That's rbwins.com, rbwins.com or rossbenjaminsports.com. It'll take you to the same place. You can call me direct. If you want me to tailor a package specifically to your needs, I can do that. Uh, I accept all major credit cards. My phone number is 781 781-571-0299. Or you could purchase right there at my website. website. You can purchase right at atsstats.com. Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, you know, ATS has gone through a huge transformation. I got to give a lot of credit to a friend of mine, uh, Scotty Asher. Uh, if he's listening out there, tip of the hat to uh, my guy, Scotty. He's helped me. And the last couple of years get me where, um, where when I was coaching football, Ross, I, I, my, my attention was, was everywhere. And um, now that I, I got back into handicapping, it's not that I ever left the industry. It's just um, when I came back um, three years ago, full time again, um, the whole ATS stats website just went through a whole different makeup. And I owe a lot of credit to uh, Scotty for helping me get where I'm at today. And I uh, just wanted to acknowledge that right now. Speaking of the internet, Ross, you remember where you laid your first bet online? Bookmaker.com. I, I, I remember that. I was so intrigued by the fact that you could make a bet online. And <clears throat> I, I'm, like a lot of sports bettors, I think at the time, Ron, uh, your discipline gets away from you because you went from a two hour window where you can call your guy illegally, you know, <laughs> to actually. Uh, being able to bet 24 seven, you know, so, you know, you had to go through a period there and say, Hey, whoa, pull back. You know, you don't have to be making a bet chasing uh, in, in it, you know, the, uh, the proposition bets that were available that a normal bookmaker wouldn't give you over the phone. So, yeah, I distinctly remember that it was uh, fond memories and a valuable teaching lesson as well. What do you mean? You don't like it and call at three in the morning by Greg Dunson? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, and I always used to love those calls because if I didn't tell him what he wanted to hear as far as what my database spit out, <laughs> he'd tell me, 
look at it again, look at it again. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so my, my first um, sports book, Ross, was uh, Inner Tops. Um, yeah. They're still around. Um, and then uh, from there, there was uh, Carib Sports, um, World Sports Exchange. You remember with the World yep. Sports Exchange? Uh, there. Yeah. yeah. And, and the Greek, um, you know, the Spiros one. He was Spiros, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Greek. One of the biggest bookmakers in New York City before he moved um, and started doing it uh, offshore. So. Yeah. And he just got out a couple of years ago. And bookmaker, yeah. yeah my, my, my friend's a bookmaker, Mickey and all the boys, um, John. Uh, man, I've known bookmaker. I've known Mickey now since uh, not sliced bread, but uh, since the beginning of uh, we started doing this uh, when we were just both starting out. And uh, man, I remember bookmaker. Actually, they, they weren't bookmaker before. They're bet Chris uh, back then, and they they went through a, a cell, and but uh, they went to bookmaker, and that's when all the dot eu and dot ag started. And um, yeah, man, uh, looking back at uh, my uh, internet time. Um, met, the, the thing I really love about the, uh, the internet and the sports handicapping is all the great managers and, and owners of sportsbook that I've met along the way. Um, the, the one thing I really miss is being able to, you know, you used to pick up your phone, call the guy right in his office and he, you know, he pick up. Now you got to go through like 10 yeah. different channels and, you know, I, you, it's just, it's a, it's a whole new world out there. I miss that, that, that old, fashion one-on-one -on -one with the yeah, you know, personal you know, interaction yeah, it just, yeah. it, you know it, some some guys still do that um you know and if you do i you know awesome good for you for not um not uh you know always knowing where you came from and knowing your roots and and you know dance with the guys who dance with you right and who got you there that's my uh, philosophy and um you know bookmakers always been good to us also um charlie at um at SG, uh, SB, sgb or sbg uh, sports book, uh, sports game, uh, what do you call it? S SGB, uh, the global one there, sports, uh, SBG global. That's it. SBG global, Charlie. And SB Man, there's so many books out there today. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's crazy. Now you get all the American books coming in with the uh, draft King and FanDuel and, um, you know, but, uh, well, maybe that's a, a time for another show with those, um, uh, you know, license, uh, book, they call themselves now, uh, here in, um, in North America, right? Yep. All right. So, Ross, NFC North today, we're going to break down the um, – we're going to look at the previews of uh, Chicago Bears, Detroit Lions, Green Bay Packers, and Minnesota Vikings. Now, um, again, looking at our stats um, from last year, we're going to be um, gearing into more of the point spread uh, on this show. And uh, before we do, we're going to give out the, um, the odds. So, again, I get my odds from Bookmaker. Now, there's, there's a lot of places out there. A lot of uh, books will have different um, uh, numbers with the regular season wins and, and all that. And um, for today, we're going to use Bookmaker. And if, Ross, you have some other uh, lines, so just uh, don't be uh, shy. Just uh, let us know what you got. Be shy, Ron. Yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely not. And uh, Chicago Bears plus 525 to win the NFC North. Detroit Lions plus 525, Green Bay Packers 180 plus 180, and uh, the favorites are uh, Minnesota Vikings plus 137. Uh, looking at the regular season over unders, we've got uh, Chicago Bears at eight, Detroit and there's eight and a half out there if you look around, uh, folks. Um, Detroit Lions uh, seven, I believe Ross is uh, seven or six and a half. It's seven at it bookmaker six and a half at bet online. Okay. And then uh, you got Green Bay Packers at nine and uh, Minnesota Vikings at nine. Now, yeah. again, this, um, I remember we did a couple of shows ago, there was uh, another two teams with the same record. I can't remember who it was. Um, it was the AFC, uh, NFC East, maybe? Uh, the Dallas. Yeah, Rangers. Dallas and Philadelphia. That's right. Yep. And um, now looking at these numbers, you got Green Bay Packers at 9.0 uh, over at plus 108. And then the under is minus 130, where Minnesota minus 122, and the under at plus 101. Um, just off the top of your head, Ross, uh, before we get right into the numbers, anything of these numbers that really stick out to you? Yeah, I mean, it, what sticks out to me is um, this isn't going to be one of the best divisions in football this year. Um, I, I, if you look at it, I mean, again, I think the AFC East has New England and Buffalo at nine, but uh, – other than the AFC East in this division, there's at least one team with nine and a half or better uh, with their regular season win totals odds. 
you got two teams at nine, you got one team at eight and another at seven, you know? So that tells me that the bookmakers saying there's a lot more parity in this division going into this year than there has been in past years. You know what? You're absolutely right. Um, looking at the, um, the records from last year, Green Bay, 13 wins, 13 and three, Minnesota, 10 and six, Chicago, eight and eight and Detroit, three and 13. And uh, looking at the season, uh, regular wins here, there's not one double digit team. And that's, uh, you know, like you said, maybe parity starting to really kick in here. Uh, and doing my research yesterday, Ross, going through all the, uh, the over-unders and my, my, doing my predictions, uh, I'm realizing, man, this is not a really good <laughs> division. This year. is going to be a good division this year. But, the, the, you know, what we say here on July 9th could yeah. be a totally different thing, um, you know, say November 15th. Um, you know, when, when the, uh, you know, the injuries come in, uh, you know. and One and, team's a lot better than we thought they were going to be. Another team didn't live up to expectations. Um, you know, a yeah. lot can be factored in by that. We always see that every year. Oh, uh, the other thing I would say, Ron, if I could add in one more point, yep. is when it comes to how low the regular season win totals are for all four of these teams comparative to other divisions, is their non-division schedules are very, very difficult. And I think we need to factor that in as well. We'll touch upon that as we go through team by team. Yeah. And, and again, folks, if you're listening to us here on, the, on your favorite podcast, either Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Play, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, you can also find us here on YouTube, uh, either going to the OSGA um, on the search or uh, ATS Stats uh, Rain Report. What we plan on doing here today is talking more about the point spread uh, and not more towards like players. Like, we're going to talk about players, but at the end of the day, um, we're not handicapping players like fantasy uh, sports, but we're handicapping uh, betting angles. And what we hope to uh, achieve here today, right, Ross, is is, is give the um, the the, the, uh, the viewers some indicators and maybe some some situational handicapping spots to really pay attention to uh, because there's value, right? In the rain report, we did shop for value, play the percentages, and I, I got some really good stats here that I'm going to share. Uh, with the public uh, right now. I'll do a little bit of a screen share right here, Ross. I, I just, can I, it'll, I, I got to ask you this, Ron, because yep. it's come up with me on a personal level many times over the last couple of years. You know, uh, fantasy's got huge, correct? I mean, DraftKings was advertising every Sunday uh, on the NFL games. Uh, people assume because we're sports handicappers, we're good fantasy players. And that's a terrible assumption. I'm terrible in fantasy football. You know, I mean, look, I, I can hold my own, but because you're a sports handicapping for professional doesn't mean you're proficient at fantasy football for the reasons you just alluded to, Ron. Yeah, no, you're yeah, right. And, short and I, of us saying we're not carrying who's on both sides of the ball, it's all built into the number. Yeah, and you know what? Um, I – I did test drive a bit of the, the fantasy sports the last couple of years. The, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. The one thing I do like about fantasy sports, you get to know the players more uh, of each team, right? Uh, and you start knowing who's the shortstop for the Baltimore. You start learning, okay, the second string or third string quarterback of this team um, or the receivers. You're, you're more into the players. And I think it's more of a, a generation thing too, Ross. I think yeah. uh, more yeah. younger um, betters today are more geared because um, and they're good. They're no, good. They're really good. Even, like, look, you know, 90% of the money paid out goes out to 10% of the people. That's a true fact. Yeah. You know, stop and think about that. That's pretty darn top heavy. So, I mean, again, I'm not trying to blow our own horn, but you got a heck of a lot better chance uh, as a novice sports better listening to people like us than, than trying to compete with a top heavy industry uh, like fantasy sports. Well, I, you know, and, and I've talked about this with uh, the big ragu a lot. And, and the thing that I, you know, sometimes you, you say you do fan, you're, you're doing um, DraftKings or something and you, you think you're in the top money. The next thing you know, you're, you're, you're tied with like 50 other guys and you're yeah. splitting that 10,000. They, they promote you're winning 10,000, but they don't tell you you're, you're going to split it with 50 other guys. Yeah. Type thing. So it's really hard. Hey, I, I consider myself a pretty good sharp guy when it comes to numbers and doing DraftKings and, and you know, I, and I've done it. But I realize that it's it's not a it's not a money maker. It's you make more money at sports betting. Well, you know, uh, Ron, I you think will, just just one sec, Roth. Sure, you I'm will, sorry. Yeah, you will get the guys, uh, and like uh, there, there, there's there's these these um, 
these groups of uh, fantasy players are like, I'll think of one guy, Osimo. Um, he's everywhere. But he's probably got like 50 entries in one game, right? Uh, and then he's got the software that with all the algorithms and all that. So, you know, they, they've got a system. And it's not one-on-one, even though there are one-on-ones. Um, but it, it all depends how much you're putting in time into it and in your system into the DraftKings. Yeah, and I think you would be a great fantasy player if you put your mind to it because you have a creative mindset to develop software that would be conducive to you being a high percentage player. But, you know, like you just said, it's, you, you, you know, your, your bread and butter is sports handicap. And you got to have the time to put into that too. You see yeah. these guys making a million a year, Ron. They're not working eight to four and then coming home and making picks in an hour. You know what I yeah. mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, – I'm just going to uh, share the screen here with you, Ross, and just yeah. let me know if you uh, get to see this here. Um, right there it is. You see that? Yes. Okay, great. So Chicago Bears. Um, now, looking at their record the last five years, um, everything in red is negative and everything in green is positive. And a lot of red on this uh, spreadsheet right here, right? Uh, looking at the uh, Chicago Bears the last five years, now against the spread straight up and over under last year, Four and twelve against the number, and it's not only betting, Ross. Like I join a lot of these kind of Vegas contests, so not not a you know. There, there's two types of uh, sports betting, right? There's when you join a contest and you enter your picks, or if you're betting uh, each week on on the, on, the, on sports, right? So uh, when I look at these numbers, I'm saying, okay, which when I'm breaking down the games every week, you got to consider the point spread of that team and how they are in the hole. You said it last a couple of shows ago, uh, bad teams will always, you know, will never get better. Um, and I, Chicago, for some reason, the last couple of years, uh, well, uh, you know, they, they're up and down. Like if you look at last year, eight and eight straight up, four and 12 against the point spread, six, 10 and 0 to the under. The year before that, 2018, uh, that's where they, they missed that field goal in the playoffs, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 12 and five uh, straight up. I'm always amazed, Ross, when you have a 12 and five straight up record and a 12 and five ATS record, it always blows my mind when I see that. Um, and then the year in 2017, five and 11, eight, six and two against the number, but four, 12 and 0 to the under. And then just, you know, what goes up comes down. Law of, remember, I always talk about the law yep. of average and look at that, you know, it's yep. just like, it's it mirrored each other right here. I'm surprised you know, for it to be a law of average, it had to be 12 and four, but I'm just amazed at how these, um, these numbers uh, really play out sometimes. Um, 2017, five and 11, three and 13 in uh, 2016, and uh, uh, 2015, six and 10. So Chicago Bears have only had one uh, winning season in the last four years, and they went for, uh, 500 the last year. 34 and 47 as a record the last five years. 39, 40 and two. And in this, folks, this is what I mean by uh, the bookmakers. They, they know how to make adjustments to the numbers, right? Look at that, 39, 40, and 2. And uh, a lot of unders, though, 34, 47 to the under the last five years. What do you make of these numbers, Ross? Well, yeah, um, it's, you'd be surprised to know that they're a pretty good home dog during that last four years, I should say. Um, I was surprised when I looked at this, Ron. Uh, I caught on to this a couple years ago, and, I, and what stuck in my mind is Chicago's been a pretty good home dog. And then when you look further into the numbers – over the last four years, yeah, they're only 28 and 37 straight up over the last four years, but 11, three and one against the spread is a home dog. And, and it, that includes eight and one against the spread if they're a home dog of three and a half or more. So um, when you get a team that plays real good defense like the Bears do, uh, and they're an underdog at home, it, it, there's a lot of value there. So especially if they're a, an underdog of a field, uh, more than a field goal. So I was sort of surprised when I saw that, Ron. Yeah, and you know what? Looking at their, um, their, their roster, Mitchell Trubisky, Nick Foles now yeah. uh, comes into the fold <laughs> at, uh, in Chicago. Uh, that's going to be interesting. That will be interesting. And, it, you know, some guys just relish and, and prefer to be in a backup role. Um, I know when I, when I played football, Ross, uh, the, the first year I started, um, I was the backup. And I, I felt better coming, um, you know, off the bench sometimes because you got nothing to really lose. Like the, the, the nervousness of the pregame is done. And I guess a lot of these in the pros have the same type of feeling. Like, you know, I don't have to worry about the night before. And then they just come in 
and they got to save the situation in some cases, or they're in mop up duty, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh, you got you know Montgomery, you got Terry Cohen. Cohen is a good little uh, yeah, good running game, yeah. good running backs anyway. Yeah, good third back, and, and you know third down back with uh, he can get the uh, the little screen plays, and he's got uh, good receiving hands. Uh, Allen Robinson, Anthony Miller, Ted Ginn, uh, Ginn, you know, getting up there in age, but uh, good veteran uh, receiver right there. You know, I'll, I'll say this about Foles if I can. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, the Bears opted not to pick up the fifth year on Mitchell Trubisky's rookie contract. Um, for those of you not familiar with that, once you get – you initially sign a five-year deal as a rookie w- with the team you, that drafted you, and then prior to your fourth year in the NFL, a team has an option to pick up your fifth year or not. They opted not to. Now, this is a guy who was, what, number two overall pick? Yeah. And it's been their number one quarterback. And then they go and sign Nick Foles as a backup for millions of dollars. So, you know, reading between the lines, Ron, I'm going to enter this season fully expecting Nick Foles to play the majority of the season for un- under center. I mean, if they were that high on Trubisky, they sure – look, you – how would they look now if they let Trubisky play the whole year? They didn't pick up his fifth year, and he has a monster year after yeah. you just signed. You know what I'm trying to say? It doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I'm I, going to handicap the Bears this year like Foles is going to be their quarterback. Well, it depends how, how you know, the, the patient level is of, of Chicago, right? Like, uh, um, you know, is the, the patient fuse this long, or is it going to be, you know, like a mile? Well, I mean, based on what I – just said i would say it's this long you know what i mean yeah you know that that's just me that's for what it's worth yeah and you know looking at the um the chicago bears um offense right now uh, not offense but their schedule so they're playing at detroit week one now week one i got a stat here on the um chicago bears so they're at detroit and during week one they're um four and one against the spread as a road dog in the division um, since uh, 83. So not a bad little stat here. Uh, sorry, four and one against the spread, but only one and four straight up. So it's going to be a tough. Goes uh, back to the home underdog thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's going to be a tough one here uh, for Chicago and looking at their second game against the New York Giants and uh, during week two of a uh, season. So they're on the road week one at Detroit and then at home against the Giants. And when the Chicago Bears are, um, um, uh, let me see here, at home during week two of a season, 11, 6, and 1 against the number, 13, and 5 straight up. So um, not a wow. bad, yeah, not a bad record here for the Chicago Bears at home. And, you know, NFL home cooking, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and if you look at the, um, the history of teams that have a tradition of winning, um, you know, I'm not surprised here. Now, looking at their uh, schedule here in September, they also add Atlanta. Indianapolis, then they got Tampa Bay, uh, week five, uh, Carolina, and uh, it's a long, long um, schedule before they get their bye week. Like looking at some teams, some teams are in the bye week, week five, they don't get their bye till week eleven. So um, you better hope things work out for Chicago because um, you know a lot of these coaches and coaching staff they depend on the bye week to fix things, uh, and if they if they run into trouble early and they can't uh, get you know get organized and have enough time to fix something. Um, they got to wait to to week eleven to get to their bye. Well, based on the schedule you just rattled off, they're going to have every opportunity to get off to a good start, right, Ron? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, it's not like they got a killer schedule to start the year. You know, you mentioned the Bears, the under trend that you were mentioning with them, and um, over their last eleven home games, nine of those eleven games have gone under the total. And wow. uh, if, if there was a total of forty-two or more, all five of those contests went under. And those five contests, when the Bears are at home with a total of 42 or more, gone over five, under five straight times, there's been a combined 27 points scored per game. So they, they got a tendency to play some very low-scoring home games in recent years. And this is what we talked about uh, when we opened up the show, Ross. Uh, things to you know, put down on your, on your phone or, your, or if you're old school, jot it down in a book. When the Chicago Bears at home, the totals 42, is it, Ross? 42 or more. Or um, consider the under because they only, the average score is 27 points, right? Yep. Combined 27 points per game, all five of those con- last five times that's occurred, uh, all five went under the total. That is gold. That's, that's, that's good stuff, Ross. 
Um, now looking at the uh, the end of the year, and you know, you put something in my head um, in a couple of shows, and this is why I love doing these shows because when you do it alone, you're, you're talking to yourself and you don't have anybody challenging you. And then when you do it with someone else, um, you mentioned something about division, um, division sandwiches. And um, looking at uh, week number 13 here, uh, sorry, uh, division sandwich, December 13th against uh, Houston. So I'm just going to bring it. Okay, so December f- uh, 13, week 14, they're in a division sandwich. They got Detroit December 6th and they got Minnesota uh, December 20th. So they're playing Houston on Sunday, December 13th. And when the um, Chicago Bears, so that's that's something they're going to have to watch out for. Home or away, Ron? Uh, they are uh, they're at home. So they're okay. at home on a division sandwich. Um, uh, geez, I wish, uh, yeah, so here's their record. Four and one against the spread. Four, one and one. And four and two straight up uh, division sandwiches. Wow, that so, goes yeah. against everything I said. Oh, really? Eh? Yeah, a division sandwich is usually, you know, and again, it depends on the situation. Um, you know, if you just came off a big win against a division leader and you got a division opponent up next and you're favored against a sub-500 team, there's some, you know, it's, it's not all cut and dried, but that's interesting to note. I mean, uh, that goes against conventional thinking of a, a sports handicapper. Yeah, and again, I, I just I'll do I'll come back to that in a second. I don't know if that's the last five years or since uh, uh, '83, but uh, I'll uh, I'll do a more. I would say that's the last five years, Ron. Yeah, well, I think so too. Yeah, you know, um, because there's a lot of division sandwiches that teams go through on, on um, yearly. You know. Yeah, and uh, also uh, week number seventeen, and the one thing I like week one and week seventeen because. The mindset of week one, every, I love week one because you're on the same footing as the bookmaker. And there's no going back last week to see how things do. You know, preseason is preseason. Yeah, really yeah. Good and point. Week one, and week 17, week 17, um, you know, sometimes a team has already won. They've already, the resting players. Um, so when the uh, Chicago Bears are week 17 against the Green Bay Packers, in their um, 13 and 5, in week 17, 13, 25 and 0 against the spread, 13 and 25 straight up home to um, home team versus the Packers. Um, so that's, uh, you know, uh, sorry, since um, 83. So since 83, week 17, 13, 25 and 0 against the spread and 13 and 25 straight up. So that's an interesting stat right there. Uh, 5, 14 and 0 against the spread, 2 and 17 as a home dog versus the Packers uh, since 83. So when the Chicago Bears, are playing the Packers and they're a home dog. And I, I presume there'll be a home dog this year. Five and 14 against the spread, two and 17 straight up. That's amazing that Green Bay can go into Chicago and win 17 games. And, they, and it's a big rivalry game beside, you know. Yeah. And if you remember last year, those teams faced each other in the season opener on a Monday night in Green Bay. And uh, the Bears blew like a 20 to nothing lead in that game and lost by three. They had still covered, if I, if I recall correctly. And, Ron, you brought up another great point, opening week. Um, you know, not a lot for betters to go on. Uh, a lot of roster changes across the league. Uh, a lot of coaching changes across the league. And I discussed this with you off air, a situation to look at in the NFL is if um, you're opening the season with a team that's an underdog that won 10 or more games the year before, 10 or more regular season games the year before, Great value. I can come up with those specific numbers on our next show, but um, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, great. Um, so we're going to just finish it off here with the Chicago Bears. Um, September road record since 83. Tw- n- nothing really crazy. 26, 33, and 3. 24 and 38 straight up. And pretty balanced when over under 32, 30, and 0. Uh, but the last five years, only 2 and 7 uh, on the road and three and six straight up. So, uh, you know, looking at the season total here of eight and a half, I got Chicago going under this year, Ross, of eight and a half. Um, you know, the, the question mark games for me are Tampa Bay, week number five, Carolina, week six, uh, at Carolina, and then uh, at Jacksonville, week uh, 16. So that can maybe, you know, three wins there, pushing them over uh, um, the eight and a half. But I, I got them under eight and a half this year. What do you got? I got over. Um, I, I actually like the Bears to be a sweeper in this division this year. 
Uh, I, I would look at, we're going to get to this later, but um, when we talk about the money line odds to win the division, I think they're a pretty good value if you stop and think. Um, like we just alluded to before, Ron, nobody's got a total of over nine. You know, so it's going to be going to be a very competitive division in Green Bay and Minnesota. And we're going to touch upon this as well. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but they got very difficult non-division away schedules this year. All right. So put a nail on that one. Uh, that's a nail. With nail a, or a nail? A capital N. <laughs> a, 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 L, nail. <laughs> so just in case people think I'm saying L, it's a. Uh, Put a nail in the coffin in that one. All right, let's go to Detroit. We're going to talk about the Lions here, Ross. Now, the bookmakers have made them a uh, over-under season win of seven. Um, you know, this Detroit Lions team here, looking at their uh, roster again, um, you know, Stafford has to stay healthy. If Stafford, I don't know, he, I know he had a shoulder injury about a couple of years ago, um, or he had some type of injury. Last year, as a matter of fact. Yes. Um, you know, and there's a big drop-off with Chase Daniels coming in after him, um, you know, looking at this roster here, uh, the last couple of years, you know, uh, three, 12, and one last year straight up, six and 10. But in 2017, they had a couple of winning years, uh, nine and seven, nine and eight, um, and seven and nine and 215. So in the last five years, they got a combined record of 34, 46, and one. But uh, looking at their point spread record, 37, 42, and three, uh, the only time they've had a, um, uh, a really decent uh, point spread record was 2018 when there were nine and seven. That's not, that's really nothing to uh, write home about. But uh, the one thing with the Lions, I'll, I'll say this though, is a lot of overs looking at last year in 2019, 10 and six to the over in 2017, 10, five and one, uh, two, 2018, six and 10 in the last five years, uh, pretty much uh, balanced when you, uh, you know, everything always you know, comes up. You know, one of the things I like saying, if it doesn't come out in the wash, it comes out in the rinse. And I'm just going to do a screen <laughs> share. Yeah, I'm just going to do, do a screen share right here. Um, I'm just going to show you something here. Just bear with me right here, Ross. Okay, where am I? Here we go. All right, do you see that? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, as you can see right here, everything in red uh, so in, in five seasons, they've had three losing seasons, three twelve. Um, you know, nothing in green really stands out. Now, looking at their schedule here, week one against Chicago, and they're, they're coming, they're starting the season against two division teams, um, you know, at home to Chicago, and uh, they're nine and six against the spread, 10 and five straight up as a home team in week one, and uh, seven and three against the number, six and four straight up versus the Bears in their last 10 home games. So not a bad opponent for the uh, Detroit Lions week one um, against uh, their old rivalry there, Chicago Bears. Yeah, um, under Matt Patricia, they, they seem to start pretty good, and then they just fade. I mean, last year, you're looking at their 3-12-1 and one record, Ron. It, I need to put an asterisk there because, um, as we talked about prior to the show starting, uh, Matthew Stafford um, – he was injured for the last – he was out, I should say, with that shoulder injury yep. for the last eight games. They started 3-4-1. and one. They went 0-8 and eight without him. And wow. that was the first time that Matthew Stafford had not played an entirety of a 16-game regular season schedule since 2011. So he went 1-2-3 you're talking eight years straight or seven years straight with playing all 16 games. So – I got to think that his durability shows that he's going to be available all year yeah. long. We can't predict stuff like that, but that's something we should really keep an eye on. You know, uh, yeah, he's from Georgia, right? Went to Georgia to play for yes. the So I wonder, yeah. I would be interested to see how he did in Georgia. If he was ever, um, you know, did he play his, you know, the four years, uh, the, you know, how is, you know, that's one thing I'm really big on when I look at quarterbacks, their durability, right? Um, yeah. You know, Brett Fryer, a tough quarterback. Aaron Rodgers, a tough quarterback. Oh, Aaron yeah. Rodgers, he, you got to drag him out of a game type thing. Uh, he'll play with broken legs, and if you, you know. Yeah, he, no, no doubt. It. Philip Rivers, the same thing, you know. Yeah. So, um, just, if yeah. I could just say this though, I mean, between 2014 and 2017, Jim Caldwell was their head coach. He won a Super Bowl with Indianapolis, 
Uh, the Lions, I don't think a lot of people realize during that four-year period with Caldwell, they were a respectable 36 and 30 straight up. Yeah. And they made the playoffs twice. Since Matt Patricia has taken over, they're 922 and one straight up. So I, I think he's on the proverbially hot seat going into yeah. this season. And then you got to start wondering, like, you know, with Caldwell, you're, you're 18 and uh, was it 15? So, you know, okay, you're not, you're not probably in the playoffs, but you're, you're, you're getting there. Right. And yeah. um, I don't know if they gave him enough chance. Now I talked about the buy. If you look at Chicago here, Ross, I'm just going to turn this over here to Chicago. Look at their buy week 11. Now, if we go back to Detroit, they got a buy after week four. That's like a yeah. breather for them. Now, I got some stats here uh, on teams. Now, we talked about this earlier, Ross, when the system trend and the team trend. Now, I got a system trend, and it goes like this. When any NFL home team during week four, uh, before a bye, their record uh, right here, 14-21-1 and one against wow. the spread. Yeah. Um, 19, but the funny thing is they're 19-17 and 17 straight up and 21-15 and 15 to the over. So, folks, if, you know, if you, Again, you, you might have a good spot here on New Orleans at home for Detroit because you look at this, they got two road games. They, they might get smoked in Green Bay. Uh, Kyler Murray, who knows what he'll do against them here um, against Arizona. So let's say they lose these two games, uh, you know, double digits or whatever. Keep, keep an eye out on the, sc the final score of these two games because I think there could be a lot of value for uh, Detroit playing New Orleans uh, come week four before that bye. And history has shown us that Teams uh, in week four before bye, uh, or sorry, play against them, 14, 21, and one, yeah. um, but 19 and 17 straight up. That, you know, that, that almost contradicts what I'm saying right there <laughs> because of the, uh, the numbers. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just, you know, the, the law of average just, you know, baffles me sometimes. 14 and 21 against the spread, but then 19 and 17. Straight Which up. means they're favorites and they're not covering most of the time as a yeah. favorite. You know, I would keep an eye on – oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't... No, I'm done there. I'm done. Okay, so let's look at the 18th of October at Jacksonville. They're coming off of by Detroit. As bad as they've been over the years, uh, they've gone 7-1 and one against the spread following a bye in the last oh, eight man. years. Won six of those games straight up, and that includes – 2-0 and against the spread since Matt Patricia has taken over over the last two years, even though his record as a head coach in Detroit has been horrible. So I know you like those types of stats coming off a of bye. Yeah. Um, that, that's one that would surprise you, right? Because you look at Detroit, the perception is losing franchise. But a winning situation, and they're going to be playing a Jacksonville team who's, I think, be lucky if they win three or four games this year. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a solid right there. Um, yeah, the buys, you know, buys are – this buys in this situation is coming too early for them, I think. Like, you know, when you get a – sometimes teams need a buy. You know, to me, buys, they should be coming like week six, seven, not week after week four uh, yeah. for some teams. But, you know, the schedule, that's the way it is. But one thing, Ross, I think better should be – now, that first game against Chicago, what do you think the, the, the line would be here? Uh, Detroit versus Chicago – I think it would be pretty even game. I, I could any, I could see um, either team being favored by a point, point and a half. You Minus know, one, one half for uh, Detroit. Yeah. yeah. Now the total, I would say it would be close to about forty six, maybe. I would say a little bit lower because of Chicago being involved. Forty four and a half, forty five. Okay. Um, so, so somewhere in that area, yeah. Okay, so I got a good stat here to the over. Um, for uh, Detroit here. When Detroit, uh, sorry, away teams versus non-division foes during week one. So away versus non-division teams week one, 12 and two to the over. But yeah, but that's a division game though, Ron. Versus non-division versus non games. Away yeah. teams versus not, but uh, you know what? It doesn't make uh, because yeah, they're sure. at home. Yeah, so yep. apologize about that one. I thought it was the, uh, I thought they were at home here. All right, so looking at Detroit here, uh, five and one against the spread, two and four straight up as a home dog week 17 uh, against Minnesota. Three, seven and no against the spread, five and five straight up as a home team versus Minnesota the last 10 games. So, um, you know, tough, tough schedule for the Lions here at the last. They got Tennessee, Tampa Bay, and Minnesota to finish the season. It's going to be a tough uh, sledding right there. 
Yeah, and um, one other thing to take a look at, too, um, Thanksgiving Day annually, Detroit hosts a Thanksgiving Day game. And again, even though they haven't had a winning tradition in recent years, they've still gone 6-2 and two against the spread on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, won four of those games straight up. They're often a home underdog through that time. And as a matter of fact, um, I, I take that back. I mean, as a favorite on Thanksgiving Day over that last eight years, 4-0 and straight up in ATS. So uh, something to keep in mind because yeah. they're playing on short rest on a holiday, you know, and the other team's traveling. Yeah, and the one thing with Detroit and Dallas, uh, depending on the season they're having, especially for Detroit, if they're not having a good season, that, that could be their Super Bowl that day. Um, you know, that that's something you want to consider. So there you have it, Ross. That's Detroit. We'll uh, put another nail in the coffin on that one. And uh, we'll move over to the uh, Green Bay Packers. Now, Packers led the division last year, 13-3 and three straight up, 7-1 and one at home, 6-2 and two, um, away from uh, Lambeau, 6-0 and oh in the division. That's uh, pretty amazing. Um, Green Bay uh, as an away underdog in September. Now, they got week one against Minnesota as an away underdog in September since 1983, 11-19-1, but only 7-24 and straight up. Wow. Um, you know, not really good numbers and not a, could be a tough, uh, you know, great way to open up the, the you know, for if you're a fan of football, seeing Green Bay, Minnesota week one. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's, you know, I think both of those matchups, the home team will be a three-point favorite off the top of my head. Again, you know, especially early, I think that'll be pretty accurate. But when they meet again uh, in week eight in Minnesota, who knows? I mean, if Aaron Rodgers gets knocked out, for example, who knows? You know, so, but yeah, that's a great matchup, especially a division rivalry to two teams that, that a lot of the experts think are going to are gonna vie for a division title. It's, it's a real good opener. Yeah. And, and you know what? That's a good opener. And if, let's say, and again, We've got to do our notes and, 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 and situate, you know, there's some sports books out there that will have a, um, they'll have a, a what if situation. If, uh, you know, if this team wins, then bet this game. Now, if Minnesota does win in week one, let's say they blow out the Packers, Packers become uh, have value the next following week because uh, Green Bay as a home favorite in September, 11, five and two against the number 14 and four straight up. And they're facing Detroit at home. Yeah, I mean, Green Bay at home is is has been terrific. I mean, since 2014, the Packers have gone 38-12-1 and one straight up at home, and that includes 28-17 and 17 against the spread, Ron, which wow. is 62.2%. So just on the blind, betting the Packers at home since 2014, you've done awfully well. And you know what? If you take that situation when they're at home as a home favorite of seven or less, it's even better. It goes to 13 and three uh, against the spread. So, or excuse me, 22 and seven against the spread, which is 75%. So the Packers at home have been a very good, parentally have been a very good home favorite, especially as a touchdown of seven or less. Wow. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's a good record. You know, and the other thing too, Ron, I don't know if you noticed it, Again, thinking like a bookmaker, we got a 13-win team, a thirteen win team like Green Bay last year, and their regular season win total is only nine. Yeah, and, and you're right. And I wrote that in my, uh, my Excel sheet. Like, the over-under is, you know, nine, but they've won, like, 13 games last year. So why the, the, the big four-point difference? Um, well, like, like what, what's changed in Green Bay to, to make them a four-point uh, difference? Well, number one, I, I don't like what they did in the offseason, Ron. I mean, they, first of all, they draft Jordan Love with the number one draft pick, uh, which was a slap in the face to Aaron Rodgers. Number two, this team uh, sorely lacks wide receiver depth in a draft that had probably the deepest core of wide receivers than we've seen in over a decade. They failed to draft even one wide receiver out of their nine picks. Um, so it, they lose their two linebackers to free agency. And, uh, you know, it, you look at the chemistry there, and it looks like, again, we've talked about culture. I can't believe some of the moves they made in the offseason or lack thereof are conducive to producing good culture. 
Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And Devontae Adams, um, you know, I remember the first night, uh, I don't know if it was last year, that first game against Chicago, uh, he had a monster game, yeah. but then he got a t- turf toe uh, or he got uh, some toe injury. Uh, he's got to stay healthy. He's yeah. got to stay healthy. The well, he's a top wide receiver. He's a top five wide receiver. The problem is they got nobody beyond him, you know? Yeah. Um, looking at the Packers by week two, um, they do well before a uh, bye week. So Green Bay as a home favorite. So uh, playing Monday night against Atlanta uh, as a home favorite before a bye week five, nine and two straight up, but only five and six against the number. Um, and then they got a division sandwich in week 13. They got Philadelphia. So they got Chicago the week before and they got Detroit after Philly. So December 6th versus Philly, Green Bay as a home favorite caught between a division sandwich. 11 and 5 straight up, but only 5 and 11 against the spread. And the um, the average line for uh, Green Bay has been minus 6.28. So keep an eye on that number to yeah. see if that number falls around that area. That's a good observation, Ron. You know, the other thing, too, is um, you asked me why the number is so low. Look at their non division road schedule. The teams are playing outside the division on the road. New Orleans, 13 and 3 a season ago. Tampa Bay, now with Brady um, and those great wide receivers they have. Houston, who was a playoff team last year. San Francisco, who advanced to the Super Bowl last year. And Indianapolis, who I personally like to win the AFC South. So, I mean, that's a very, very difficult uh, road non-division schedule. Another thing, Ron, too, real quickly, uh, since 2010, uh, Green Bay is 108-49 and straight up when they turn the ball over two times or less. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah. So if, if you look at as the year develops and, and you look at turnover differential, you look at opposing defenses facing Green Bay, if they're not teams having successful forcing turnovers, that's something to keep an eye on as well. Hey, I always say the, the only way, you know, the two ways you can you know, lose a game, beat yourself or um, turnovers and penalties. That's the only way you can really um, lose a, f- a football game, right? Um, yeah. You turn the ball over or you get too many stupid penalties, um, that will cost you. Eventually that comes up, you know, you got – I knew I'd get that uh, coaching stuff out of you. Yeah. Get yeah. that coaching piss and vinegar out of you with that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, penalties drive me nuts, <laughs> uh, especially the selfish ones. And turnovers, right, Ryan? Uh, turnovers, yeah. Uh, but the penalties really, when they're, you know, when it's emotions, yes. um, players yeah. don't, don't keep their emotion in check. It hurts Pre, the team, right? Pre-snap t- penalties, yeah, it, it drives you guys crazy. Oh, absolutely. Hold your water, I used to say with the O-line. Hold your water. <laughs> um, so looking at the schedule, like you were saying, Minnesota, so here I'm just going to go through the schedule. and I have them at eight or nine wins here. Um, so at Minnesota, I got them as a loss. Detroit, I got them as a win at home. Uh, New Orleans, a loss. Atlanta, I got them as a win here. Um, now here's the check marks, like the the question marks. At Tampa Bay, at Houston, um, Minnesota at home. That's three. At San Fran, there's another L. Um, Jacksonville at home, that's four. At Indy, that's five. I, you know, then maybe in Rivers. Uh, Chicago. Now again, this is um, Chicago should be a win at home. So I don't know why I missed that one there. So let's say we got six. And then Philly. Um, Philly's a question mark. And then at Detroit should be a win, seven. Carolina at home should be a win, eight. Tennessee. Um, Tennessee, you know, depending on, on the – see, the reason why I put a question mark there, Ross, is is durability and the injuries. Is, yeah. You know, and, and we talked about this earlier, right? Um, can, can people stay healthy? Like our mindset July 9th, is this now what is it going to be november 10th right but again it's a cold weather game and you've mentioned this several times over the first few shows watch out for teams that could run the ball and play defense in cold weather and and tennessee proved they could do that last year i mean derrick henry is is a monster and their defense is underrated so that's not a gimme for green bay whatsoever yeah, and then I got at Chicago. I gave him a nine right there. So I was between eight and nine. Uh, yeah. Again, I, I like it under. Um, you know, it's just a team that won 13 games last year. Um, I agree with you, Ross. Uh, I don't know what uh, what to expect this season with this uh, Packer uh, this Packer team. And you know, love uh, well, Utah. He's from. Um, yes, Utah yeah. State. 
Yeah, Utah State. That's right. The Aggies. The kid threw 16 interceptions as a senior. You know, I wow. I just don't get it. Um, but anyway. Yeah. So no, I I think it's under, and we said this prior to the uh, the show. Uh, we allow a lot of teams to go under here. Yeah. All right. So I, and up? if I could say this, it's one yeah. of my it's one of my best bets as far as NFL regular season win totals. I love Green Bay under nine regular season wins. Under oh really eh? Yep. Okay. Uh, and again, I got some stats. There's two last stats here. Uh, Green Bay Packer is an away underdog in a dome, so they're going to be playing at New Orleans, I believe, on September 27th. 17 and 33 straight up. Wow. 27 and 23 against the number, but uh, where my money probably is going to be on the over. 32, 17 and one to the over. Breeze so, and Rogers. Yeah. Hey. What do you think the total is going to be? Oh God. 50, it's going to be 53, 54. Yeah, 53, uh, up in the 50s. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Hey, just bring it. They'll be watching flag football. It'll be like seven on seven <laughs> up there, right? Yeah. Uh, again, one last thing here, Ross, and, and I'm bringing back a system trend. When any NFL home team is playing on Monday night after playing New Orleans, so we're talking about the Dome, and then they're going to be playing Monday night. Um, let me see here. After playing uh, New Orleans on a Monday any home teams playing Monday night after playing New Orleans? Okay, so that doesn't make sense because they're playing the Monday night. See, that's one thing about doing research. You shouldn't do it late at night. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. if but if you're ever in that situation, 4-12 and 12 straight up, 3-12-1 and one against the spread. So wow. any, home, any NFL home team playing Monday night after playing New Orleans. Okay, so after playing New Orleans, that's right. Uh, so at Tampa Bay, the next game, 4-12. and 12, uh, any team playing? No, that doesn't make sense. Sorry. Oh, I'll get there, Ross. No problem, Ron. All right. Um, all right. Let's get to the Minnesota. Minnesota Vikings. I'll just get, a, get off the uh, screen share here. There we go. Uh, Minnesota, last year, 10 and 6 straight up, 6 and 2 uh, at home, 4 and 4 uh, away, 2 and 4 in the division. Now, that's a little surprising. Uh, 2 and 4 in the division with a winning record. Um, what do you think of that? Um, two and four in the division with the winning record. I think that that doesn't surprise me uh, because Minnesota has been a monster under Mike Zimmer against non-division opponents, especially since he took over in 2014, Ron. Yeah. Uh, as non-division home games, how about 25 and seven straight up and 24 and eight against the spread at wow. home versus non-division foes, which leads you to believe that you know, they're so-so against the division, to get back to your point when you asked me that. And you know what? If they're a non-division home favorite of nine and a half or less under Mike Zimmer, again, same coaching staff where I pay attention to team trends a little bit more, 19-2 and two against the spread as a non-division home favorite of nine and a half or less under Mike Zimmer. Wow. That's, uh, that's solid. Yeah. And you know what? Minnesota week one, Green Bay. Uh, when Minnesota's a home team versus a division foe in September, week one. Uh, so they got Green Bay. 16 and five straight up, 12, seven and two against the number. Oh. And eight and 13 to the under. So, so what that tells me is, is as the season wears on, they're a fade as a home team within the division based on what I just said and what you just said. So two good points. Yeah. And uh, so as a home, and then when they're a home favorite, that number gets a little better uh, straight up. So Minnesota as a home favorite versus division full in September week one, uh, 14 and one. So um, yeah, pretty good numbers right here. But you know, I like the under here, four, 11, four, and, uh, four, 11 and 0 to the under. So um, hey, who knows? Maybe the under is a good play right there too. Now in week two, they're facing at Indianapolis. And uh, during week two, when they're a road team, they're eight, nine, and three against the number, and eight, eleven, and one straight up, and seven, thirteen, and no to the under as a road team week two. So um, you know maybe Indianapolis is worth a look here, depending on how they play. And again, we we talk about like your your uh, law of average system, right? So if Minnesota wins the week before and Indianapolis loses, um, that plays right into your system of playing on uh, Indianapolis. Yep. yep, exactly. So I mean. You know, and, and on the opposite side of that, during the last three seasons, Ron, Minnesota is 6-0, 6 and 0 straight up in ATS is a home favorite of minus 12 or less when they're coming off a loss. So, so can you say that again? Sorry. 
Minnesota at, as a home favorite of 12 or less okay. over the last three years. Yep. If they lost the game before, perfect 6-0 and straight up in ATS. Won those six games by an average of 18.3 points per contest. So wow. coming off a loss, playing at home as long as they're not a favorite of 12 and a half or more, you know, beware of the wounded animal kind of thing, you yeah. know, and the strong home field. So they're, they're a heck of a play in that situation. You know, and, and, and again, it, real quickly, their away schedule, non-division is brutal again, uh, similar to Green Bay. I mean, you're looking at, at New Orleans, at Indy, uh, at Houston who made the playoffs last year, at Seattle who made the playoffs last year, and then Tampa Bay. Uh, so th that's no picnic. And you could see, Ron, by looking at Green Bay and Minnesota's non-division road slates, why the bookmakers have adjusted their line so low. Yeah, no, you're right. Tough schedule. Like, and wow, like that, those are, you know, Tennessee, Houston, Seattle, um, the, you know, so Tennessee, Houston, man, you're facing really good quarterbacks again. Two, um, all three teams uh, made the playoffs this season ago. Yeah, in Tennessee, you got to deal with that running game. So, yeah. and, then, and then after your bye, you got Green Bay, and then you got three uh, division games. Like, yeah, Green yeah. Bay, Detroit. Yeah, I'm just going to share this with you right here. Um, so after you see that, Ross, the uh, screen? Yes, I do. Okay, yes, perfect. I do. See, I, I got to ask you. So this way, I, I know I see it, but I don't know if you and the audience will see it. Um, so, yeah, tough, tough. Green Bay, Indy, Tennessee, Houston, Seattle, Atlanta, bye week, Green Bay, then Detroit, Chicago, Dallas, Carolina. Ja wow. Yeah, some, uh, somebody doesn't like Minnesota right now. <laughs> Tampa yeah. Bay. Well, Carolina and Jacksonville should be wins at home. Uh, oh, versus, versus Carolina versus Jacksonville at home on the 29th of November and December 6th. Okay. Based on the non-division home record they have, um, those teams aren't expected to do much this year. Yeah, but the road, the road slate is just horrendous. Yeah. And how about for Christmas, we send you New Orleans as a Christmas <laughs> gift. <laughs> hey, Drew Brees, yeah. Here you go. Deal with this. Yep. But you know what? They, they, hey, looking at Minnesota, and when I did my research last night, obviously I need to drink more coffee because some of my research I got to <laughs> – but, you know, I apologize for some of the uh, missed uh, numbers, folks, but I, one thing about me, I'll get better. Um, but looking at the, um, the records here, I just want to show you this, Ross, in this – you know, I'm looking for green and red here in the last five years. So you look at uh, Chicago, pretty balanced, right? When it comes to green and red, uh, looking at Detroit, you know, a little bit of green. Uh, and here's the ATS column. Here's the straight up column. These are the only two columns I'm looking at right now. Yeah. Green Bay, you know, a lot of green right here. And then Minnesota, boom. Look yeah. at this. Minnesota's yeah. record in uh, straight up and against the number of the last five years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And seven, 10 and yeah. eight. And again, it correlates to Mike Zimmer. You know, again, staying with that coach head coaching theory, Ron. Yeah, absolutely. I'm and not, he, I, I can't hammer that home enough. But there is a little bit of a Green Bay hangover um, yeah. come week two when Minnesota's on the road after playing Green Bay, um, fourteen and twenty-one against the number, thirteen and twenty-two straight up. So um, th there are hangover games, right? Sure. Um, you know. Again, Dallas Cowboys, uh, they're playing the Cowboys here on November 22nd. Um, I thought I had some numbers right here. Uh, um, Minnesota as a home favorite after playing Dallas. Or they play out yeah, since 983. Um, pretty good straight up record, 111 and 16 1, but it's only 71 97 and 4 against the number. And the last five years, that's 7 and 14, but 14 and 7 straight up. So, um, Straight up. And here's the thing with, uh, you know, Ross, sometimes in sports betting, um, people get so infatuated with point spread. What's the difference between spending 140 on a money line yeah, than, and then, than, than, than playing the point spread? Like sometimes I'll, I'll, I'd rather play the points, the, the money line on a game. Like when I get stats like this on Minnesota, say they're minus 140, 150 against Dallas or uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah. Against Dallas at home. I'll, I'll you know, that's like taking, um, you know, a good pitcher in baseball um, with good value. Would you, yeah. would you agree on that? Well, and I, I, I do if, if the circumstances call for it. I mean, one, minus 140, correct me if I'm wrong, Ron, because I'm not a big money line player in football. 
that would be like a two and a half, three point favorite, correct? Yeah, around somewhere, there. somewhere yeah. in that area. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're looking at like you're saying the cowboy hangover theory there, um, home favorites after playing Dallas since 1986, uh, they don't do good against the spread, but they're they're great uh, straight up. Um, that that to me, if you got something in that that money line range that you, parameter that you just discussed, or that team is an underdog. Um, that looks like a pretty good play to me. Now, so. the, the play, and here's the um, the the, uh, the appendix, or they call it the uh, if um, if the team lost versus Dallas the week before, fourteen and four straight up, and if they won against Dallas, twenty seven and eight straight up the next week. Yeah, yeah. So um, so if they beat Dallas on uh, November twenty second, um, you know that game against Carolina could have a lot of value. And yeah. This is exactly what we wanted to do with our show today, Ross. Yeah, During but the that, thing there, the yeah. thing, oh, I'm sorry, Ron. The, no, thing no, there, the thing there is they're most likely to be a touchdown or better favorite against a Carolina team uh, that's going to struggle to win this year. Um, that's the only um, bad point there in that regard. But, I mean, that's a strong theory, uh, what you just said. You know, Dallas is perennially, you know, America's team, it's, yeah, they they're always in the limelight. Everybody wants to beat them, right, Ron? So th this whole thing makes sense. Well, absolutely. I don't know. My uh, my thing went off a bit there. Did you notice that? Did you hear like a? Can you still hear no. me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Hear you yeah, I just got a little message that. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Can you just repeat that? The, because when you were talking, my my speaker just well, went off. Well, because the, the game after Dallas is Carolina. Okay. Um, their eight team's ATS record isn't very good the week after Dallas, but their straight up record is good, uh, yeah. which means that as favorites aren't covering the week after Dallas, and they figure to be a touchdown or better favorite at home against Carolina in that game. So that's the only hesitancy I would have there. Yeah, and that you're right. Sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and you're right. And the reason why I brought up that stat was for the straight up factor. Um, yeah. You know, point spread does not bring any value uh, when right. I look at those numbers. Um, but again, depending on the number, right? If yeah. that number is manageable and it's like a, like a, you know, I have a rule in baseball. I don't lay anything over 150. Yep. Uh, anything 150 or lower I'll consider, but I, I really have to love it. I'm, and when it comes to baseball, I'm a totals guy. Uh, you yeah. know, 70% of my bets in baseball are totals. I will bet the odd side, like, you know, 30, 35% of the time. But it has to make sense to me because money line and points red, two different, you know, apples and orange when it comes to uh, betting. And I wouldn't get, to, you know, if you're listening out there, Ron brings up a good point. I wouldn't get too caught up with just the game against Carolina because Minnesota figures to be somewhere around minus 330 to minus 400 in that game on the money line. But other teams, you know what I mean? It, it, it holds water with other teams, especially if you're catching that team as an underdog, you know. Yeah. You know, a team coming off playing Dallas, and they're an underdog. Following, we heard that you alluded to those teams have, you know, so um, that that holds a lot of water. So, Ross, uh, looking at uh, Minnesota's schedule, um, tough, tough schedule. Yeah. Um, but I, I really love Minnesota here. I think they're they're they're, they're going to have 11 wins this year. I think they'll be one win better than last year. Um, I got them winning 11 games. Um, you know. What do you have? I have them falling right around nine. I do. Um, I just think they're a homer team. Okay. Um, they haven't been terrific inside the division at home. Um, they win their non-division games at home, but their non-division road schedule is so brutal, Ron. I can't pull the trigger on 10 or more wins. So I, I'm looking at eight, nine win team. I, I, you know, not to get ahead of myself, but I like Chicago to win the division. It, oh. it, it, as a value, uh, I'm, I'm going to throw caution into the wind in, in this situation. Again, I go back to look at what the regular season win totals are. They're pretty even across the board in this division. Well, you know what, Ross? Uh, the reason why I like Minnesota, the second half schedule is not that bad. When you go to week nine, you got Detroit. I got them as a win. At Chicago, depending if Trubisky, the way he's, you know, if, he, if he's not up to par, if he's not in you know, the quarterback situation, that, that in Chicago, that quarterback situation will rule the way that offense goes. And, the, you know, I don't have a lot of faith right now in Chicago. 
Uh, so I give them a win right there. It could be a question mark. Um, Dallas, you know, at home, they, I got them winning there. At home to Carolina, at home to Jacksonville, that's nine. At Tampa Bay, that's a question mark. At home to Chicago, that's a 10. Uh, New Orleans, Drew Brees on Christmas uh, Day, good luck. I don't think so. But uh, and then I got 11 wins at home to Detroit. So that's the only reason why uh, the second half of the schedule, uh, if they can stay healthy and Cousins can play like he did in the second half last year, um, I think 11 wins is, is reachable for the Vikings. Now, the one thing I do like, they're playing the Chicago, um, Minnesota's playing Detroit. At Detroit, and in their last 10 games against the Lions, five and five straight up, but seven and three against the point spread. So a um, little bit of value right there, but not too crazy about that five and five record. Yeah. It's still, it's Especially still, since they'll, be, they'll probably be a favorite in that game, I would assume. Yeah. And even at Detroit, they would be a favorite, you know? Yeah. And you know what, if, if that's the, if, if that's the game where, you know, they're at, uh, say at, um, at nine or eight and you got to get over the hump to, to yeah. make your bet, that's a good team to put the, for Minnesota to play. Um, I'd rather play Minnesota. I'd rather play Detroit than New Orleans week 17. If I'm, you know, depending well, on my future, yeah, depending you don't on have my to, futures ticket here. You don't have to be Vince Lombardi to figure that one out, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and on that note, we'll put a nail in that coffin right there on the uh, NFC North. But mark my uh, word, Ron, I believe Nick Foles is going to be the quarterback the majority of the season for the Chicago Bears this year. So I, I, that's how I'm looking at it, and um, that's why I'm going out a little bit on a limb. You know, I, I once in a while you got to take a shot. Uh, your regular season win totals and odds to win the division in July. Uh, are a crapshoot anyway for the most part. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you have some strong bets, like I said, with Green Bay, I like it under. But I'm going to take a shot, Ron. Hey, with, you know what? It's um, one five odd. to one odds, you know. You know he wasn't uh, great last year. Um, but um, you know, Nick maybe, Foles you're referring to? Yeah, but uh, Foles was. Went, uh, well, with Jacksonville, he only played two games. Yeah, he got hurt I mean. and he was out for the year. He was injured for the, yeah, so um, yeah. You know, only two games. Yeah. yeah, but you know, um, who knows? Um, we'll, we'll check out the situation when they when they get to uh, Chicago. The the, way the, uh, the quarterback battle. Guy won a Super Bowl, Ron. Don't forget, you know. He... Yeah. Oh no. Hey, to me, he's um, he's the Frank Reich of football right now, right? Like, yeah. Remember yeah. Frank Reich when he was in Buffalo? Just a great, great backup. Um, you know that you knew when he go went in. Uh, when Nick Foles goes in, I'm not worried. You know, there's some backups you're like, oh no, just is this gonna be a running game now? Uh, yeah. But no, Nick Foles, you know, that's probably a good analogy of uh, yeah. Frank Reich. Um, Frank you know, Reich was more of a game manager, in my opinion. He Frank Reich won me a lot of money against I Houston. know. <laughs> hey, look it. But you got to admit, Frank Reich had a lot of offensive talent around him at the skilled positions, you know, uh, it, that comeback against Houston. Hard to argue with that. Oh, God, that was In the playoffs, that was amazing. Yeah. But uh, no, you know what, Ross? Um, good show today. Uh, I like the fact that uh, we brought up uh, – I try to bring up as much accurate numbers as I could. I apologize for that. Uh, again, um, work on that. There's some reason. Hey, even Aristotle missed a couple hey, equations on occasion. Uh, it's just when you're doing your research and you're you know, putting numbers into the Excel sheet, uh, sometimes you lose track of, of things. You know, and I, I will say this. You, you listeners have a lot to look forward to at ATSStats.com. And, and I'm going to defend Ron – for any little mistakes he made today because he's been uh, talking to the programmer who's, who's going to be making a ton of changes at that site. You're going to be pretty excited. So, you know, it's not like he doesn't have anything on his plate. Yeah. Analysis by paralysis. That's what happened. And that's my story. And I'm sticking <laughs> to it. <laughs> so, yeah. That's awesome, Ross. No, you know what? Uh, I, I really look forward to the season. I look forward um, once sports come back and, and these shows will be veered more uh, geared more towards um, the matchups of the day. Um, you know, I really look forward to helping people and people following us and hopefully uh, we can make people money with these uh, podcasts, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And um, continue to listen folks. And again, you could find us on our YouTube channels, which is either OSGA or the Raymond report. Just do a search on YouTube and don't be afraid. Subscribe folks, because when you subscribe, you're going to be notified pretty much immediately when we publish anything, and uh, it gives you a little bit of a heads up. And 
give us a like on this video today, for example, in future videos. It just helps to know that people out there appreciate what we're doing for them. Yeah. And I'll tell you one thing, Ross, something we're really not good at is keeping this under an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> I can just bet. hear my wife it's now. It's supposed to be an over for the listeners out there. Bet over one hour each show because. Yeah, yeah let's well, do, we should do an over under, have a sports book do. What's the rain report over under on the fifth show? It's certainly not an under an hour. It's well, not a good 15. play. It's great. That's <laughs> plus 1,200. Yeah, I can hear my wife now. Too long, too long. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Ross, great show today, buddy. Uh, Always a pleasure, this, Ron. Uh, and you know what? The thing is, when you do a show with this and you're having fun and you're doing it with a guy you like a lot, and, uh, you, you know, the time goes on quickly, right? You just you yeah, know, yeah. You start talking. We, we're Feelings doing mutual, my right? man. Feelings yeah. mutual. We love doing this. This is something, a passion of love we have, right? So, yeah. all right, this is the Rain Report with uh, special guest and handicapper Ross Benjamin. And uh, shop for value, Plato's percentages. And uh, we'll be back shortly with another Raymond Report.